Food, as we all know, keeps us alive and it is the backbone for our existence. It provides nutrients and substances that provide energy for activity and it gives us the materials for growth and repair. So why is it then that so many people report health improvements when they don't eat for a short period of time? Well, in today's video, I will take you through the journey to help you understand exactly what is happening in the body and also what you can expect when you don't eat for five days. And very quickly, before we jump into the five day journey, just a quick reminder as always that I'm now offering the SIBO, organic acid, stool test and consult via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. So during the first day, unless you have already been following a ketogenic type diet, your body will be using its sugar stores known as glycogen. This is a tightly controlled process and at any one time you will have approximately 400 grams of glycogen in your muscles and approximately 100 grams in your liver. If you are very active or you are an athlete, then your body may be adapted to store more glycogen than somebody who is maybe sedentary. But just to give you some idea, the 500 grams of glycogen stored in a normal person will equate to approximately 2000 calories or so. Now during the first day of not eating and fasting, your body will not burn through these 2000 calories. Depending on your metabolism, it will use around 70% of these 2000 calories or roughly 1400 calories and it will keep the remaining 30% for emergencies. But generally speaking, 70% of your stored glycogen will be used up in the first 24 hours or so. During this initial 24 hour period, your body is also likely to begin burning your own body fat. Now if you are fat adapted because you have been following a ketogenic diet, then you will likely see a marked rise in your ketone levels by the end of the first day but if you are not fat adapted then you are very unlikely to see rises in your ketone levels because your body will have begun urinating these ketones out from your body. Also if you are someone who has been following a ketogenic diet or you are someone who practices intermittent fasting regularly then your body may start to increase its levels of autophagy or cellular cleansing after 8 to 16 hours but for the average person it will be 24 to 48 hours before autophagy starts to increase in your body. During the first 24 hours you are also likely to experience some common symptoms associated with fasting. These include fatigue, mental lethargy, hunger, cravings, mood changes and also increased urination. These symptoms occur as your body begins transitioning from glucose to burning fat and ketones for fuel. Some people may also experience sleep disturbances during this period. As you progress into day two you will likely experience the same symptoms from day one although halfway through day two many people will experience that their hunger levels will start to drop. Now if you are someone who is fat adapted and usually practices intermittent fasting then it is usually around day two where you will hit a brick wall and you will feel very fatigued indeed. And if your body is used to running on carbohydrates then it will likely be day three before you hit that brick wall. During day two regarding if your body is used to burning carbohydrates or fats then you are also likely to develop some further symptoms ranging from changes in your tongue colour, rashes across the body because of communications between the gut and skin microbiomes and also many people will start to feel colder as not eating for 48 hours will start to downregulate your active thyroid hormones. So here many people are likely to experience cold hands and feet. This is a normal process during fasting and it will not only apply to your thyroid hormones. During fasting your body will also reduce its hormone sensitivity to many important hormones from insulin, cortisol and many other hormones. Here your body is slowing everything down in the absence of food. Now by the end of day two if you are measuring the effects in the body then you would notice some very cool changes occurring. So for example, you would start to experience some resets in your microbiome as some of the bad flora begin to be removed. You will also notice that cellular autophagy starts to kick in quite sharply and your body begins to break down older and weaker cells and replace these with newer ones. Many people by the end of day two will also see a rise in the production of growth hormone in order to preserve muscle mass and your growth hormone will also help with improving your immune function as well as boosting your efficiency with fat burning. By the end of day two, many people also start to see 
a rise in stem cell production where your body will start to produce new white blood cells and these increases in stem cells can also repair your intestinal membranes, joints and also muscles. Around the same time that your stem cell production increases, you will also likely see repair and reset processes within your DNA. So some of the genes that are turned on promoting inflammation can essentially be turned off for some people as you hit the end of day two. For many people, they are also likely to see improvements and down regulations of their hormones by the end of play at day two. Depending on the person and the health of their endocrine system, fasting can also help remove defective hormone receptors and replace these with healthier receptors. What can happen after this is that the communication between your endocrine system and the cells within your body are significantly improved. Moving into day three, there is usually a sharp rise in your ketone levels as your body is now utilizing fat for its energy. And as I said before, if you are somebody whose body has been largely carbohydrate adapted and not fat adapted before you went into the fast, then it is during day three you are likely to hit the wall and not feel particularly great. So many of the symptoms that we discussed during days one to two are likely to get worse for some in day three. During day three, your body will likely see a continued rise in autophagy, stem cells, and also growth hormone production. Towards the end of day three and into four, a lot of the unwanted symptoms will start to dissipate, and as the stem cell autophagy and growth hormones increase, you can expect prolonged periods of energy and also mental clarity. For many who are carbohydrate adapted, like most sensible people should be, they will notice that the high urine ketone levels during day one and day two will usually drop on day three three as your body starts to become more efficient in burning fat. As you move into day four, you will have undergone and experienced most of your autophagy and cell cleaning benefits, which will have been seen between 48 and 72 hours, and you will have now forced your body and brain into being efficient and fueled by ketones and fat. It is between day three and day four that many people experience that euphoria, where they feel their energy levels increase, and also their mental clarity is often tack sharp. Hunger and cravings should also be minimal during this period. Now, it is at this point that I would suggest that most people break the fast. They will have undergone the vast majority of autophagy benefits. They will have seen cell cleaning, hormone improvements, insulin improvements, and also positive impacts to their microbiome. But the problem with some humans is that they always take things to extremes, and these people generally believe that a little of this fasting is good, therefore a lot must be incredible. Continuing the fasting for many, beyond the 72 to 96 hour point, they may start to experience negative effects such as constipation and also gut issues. As they continue to abstain from foods containing fibers, their microbiomes may take a significant hit. As you will have heard me say many times, your colon will generally have 600 to 1,000 different species, and these help with everything from fermentation of fiber and breakdown of your foods. So if you continually starve these bacteria above and beyond days three to four, then the number of these bacteria will start to reduce quite quickly, and when you eventually start to reintroduce the foods, you may experience many unwanted digestive issues. It is why many people who carry out extended fasts really struggle with digestion after. So quite simply, if you are embarking on extended fast beyond 72 to 96 hours, then there is little reason for this. Your body will have already received a lot of the benefits you were striving for, and you should absolutely stop the fast if you start to experience heart palpitations, increased hair loss, passing out or dizziness, extreme pain in the body, high levels of vomiting or diarrhea, or if you are losing too much weight. People, for some strange reason, where the number of fasting days is some sort of badge of honor. You are not a bigger man or woman by doing a 10 or 30 day fast over someone who has seen the same level of benefits in just 72 to 96 hours. It is far more beneficial, as demonstrated in the literature, for you to do short, sharp fast intervals then pushing your body to ridiculous extremes in the search for some unrealistic optimal health. So let's say hypothetically, you are going to do the full five days. That appears to be a popular number when people are fasting. And then by the end of day five, as I said before, you would have already seen the big improvements in terms of autophagy and also stem cell production. In day five, if you have got to this point, you will have seen your blood ketones drop as your body is continuing to transition and become more and more efficient with fat burning and also ketones. 
If you are somebody who is lean, then day five and beyond is where you will begin to lose your lean body mass. Now, if you've carried out a 72 to 96 hour fast correctly, then the main benefits your body will have undergone are increased levels of autophagy, increases in growth hormone production, which will help boost your immune system and help the body undergo repair, and you will have also seen a boost in your stem cell production. Do not believe the madness that you read online that stem cells, autophagy and hormone changes have a linear effect in the body, i.e. the more you do, the more these processes increase and the more benefit you will experience. For many people, the risks of prolonged fasting will massively outweigh any benefits. This is why you see so many people and ex-vegans backed into corners where they are no longer able to tolerate fruits and vegetables because they have destroyed their digestion and overall health. There are also two other things that I would like to mention at this point. If you have done a three or five day fast, then you want to allow yourself one to two days of reintroducing foods. If you jump back into food right off the bat, then it will likely cause a problem for many. So my advice would be to start with liquefied meals, such as smoothies and soups, and then start increasing the solids from there. Also, a strong word of warning for those considering extended fast beyond 48 hours. You should be doing this under the guidance of a suitably qualified professional, and also the following people should not go near fasting because of the known risks. So pregnant women, nursing mums, children, type one diabetics, those with a history of eating disorders, high performance athletes, and also those with a low body weight. You should also reconsider fasting if you're on medications before consulting with your doctor. Anyhow, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out this one up here because I'm sure you'll find it equally interesting. And the only other thing that's left for me to say is to remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.